Scott, okay. Yeah. Hey. I'm my sister Riley. Hi. Nice to meet you. Now I know everybody. One more of the famous gauges. How's it looking, Frankie? It's good. It's good. It's great. Hope it, all that has to happen now is people just show up. See if anybody actually shows up to this thing. I showed up. I well, you can go through. Okay. She's one of the actresses. It's crummy out. I'm just but getting, I got parking. I'm getting one drop off after another. No, it sucks. But you know, it's also what happens. I've done a few of these now. It's what happens. People drop out. Oh, and yeah. Then people they always even... say, oh, yeah, anything you do, I'll totally come. And then I tell my <laughs> friends that I'm actually in stuff. And they're like, I got a thing. Hey, nobody's like... coming. Big <laughs> turnout. Oh, Maya's here. Yeah. Nobody's coming. <laughs> Frankie, what's going on tonight that you're not sure people are coming? It's a half hour till, so people don't show up for things until on time, right? Right. Hopefully that's the case. I'll be there in spirit. I've got no I'm never going to be an actor. I'll be there in spirit, but in body, I'll be watching WrestleMania. Don't leave me with my dick in my hands. you got a half hour. People will show up. Somebody's going to show up. I remember. Let me tell you a story. In West, West Philadelphia, born and raised. I remember uh, uh, about... One movie ago. <laughs> One movie. The last movie. Abo the Human. Movie before last. We showed up to the theater, again probably about a half hour early. We got set up, and uh, we couldn't get into the theater. It was locked. There was nobody around to let us in. Emerson? No, it was at UMass Dartmouth. And <laughs> we just like, we th we had a moment. Where we thought a lot of people were going to show up, and we weren't going to be able to watch a movie. And uh, no, but it all worked out. There's Jan. So she had to come. So that's why Jan she had to come. <laughs> so she, oh, she had to come. <laughs> you're, bre you're breaking all kinds of uh, you're all all auditorium rules, rules here, you know. So Keith will be here in about 20 minutes, he said. No Aaron. No Aaron? Not even Aaron. What are you talking about? No, How did you find out that he's not coming? I, call, I finally got through to Keith. And Keith was like, ah, I'm not coming. <laughs> he and Mike, but... Stop but, he, he and Mike, but no Aaron. But uh, we'll see what happens. All right. I'm excited to be here. Well, good. Now I'm self indulgent. Andrea wants us to save her a seat. <laughs> they just got in. We were waiting for these three. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the first of this year MFA thesis project screening. I'm Jan Roberts Breslin. I'm the program director for the MFA in Media Art here at Emerson. And we're here to see Frankie Freen, sexually frank. Night. And following the screening, we'll uh, have Q and A with Frankie and other features. Who knows who? Yes. <laughs> yes. So this is the crowd. Woo! Hey, the cinematographer. <laughs> so this is the crowd that missed Game of Thrones, WrestleMania. Thank you very much for coming out. It takes a little while to make these movies, not so much time to, to actually screen them. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to do the Q&A afterwards. I'm going to keep it a surprise who's coming up. And uh, we do have we have DVDs and Blu-rays here, but it's a little weird to sell them to you. So maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll give them the hell away. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't have a, a solution to that, but who hasn't seen the movie? Of, of the people here? So good. You go, girl. All right. Well, thanks for filling it out, guys. We'll, we'll talk to you right afterwards, and we'll explain everything. I might go in the back. Yes. In that big chair. <laughs> oh, feel free, feel free to use your phones. A uh, big round of applause for Kyle Gage, Dan Leach, Keith Sadik, Nina Shalesky, all the people that made this movie actually good. Uh, we want to answer some of your questions. A lot of you have seen the movie a few times, so it feels a little dumb. But for that reason, I normally do these by myself. I want to bring up Keith, because he's way more interesting than talking. Yeah, Keith! Uh, you go, girl! And I want to bring up Aaron. Yeah, Aaron! A lot of the movie was based yeah. on him. Yeah. <laughs> I think we... Can you talk? Say something. No, but... A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. You can hear him? Hello, no. people. I have a question. Yes, you back there. <laughs> Three. Me? I dropped. I dropped a uh, like a, a, a Demi Moore tear 
Um, what does that mean? <laughs> more like a, I, I think I'm thinking of Julianne Moore because she actually right. cries in every single film. Um, when not so much during his emotional performance in the car, but when he repeatedly kept my character's name is Frank, as opposed to Frankie. That's the idiotic way that we distinguish reality from fiction. Um, but when he kept saying Frankie over and over again because he was drawing from something real. Oh, Frankie. Uh, Aaron's, uh, uh, the character of Dan, played by John Ryan, the sort of homophobic gay character, uh, was pretty based on Aaron. Would you say you're a homophobe? I am. <laughs> I do agree. I'm gay. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's that's the only time I ever did. Um, Nina cried a few times because she was just... I didn't ask about Nina. The toe in the butt. <laughs> she, yeah, she saw the toe in the butt and just shed a few tears right there. <laughs> And by the way, speaking of which, Maya, the toe in the butt scene, confirm it for everybody here. Is that your ass? That is not my ass. Whose ass is that? That's Nina's ass. That's my wife's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Nina. Good for you. Movie magic. <laughs> Does that answer the question? That was actually Keith's ass. I guess so. <laughs> I already it's, have I shaved it personally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Kyle? What do you shoot it on? <laughs> a camera. That's a great question for the cinematographer. Um, I wish what, it was here. <laughs> what did we shoot? We shot it on two seventies, obviously. Elaborate. Obviously. 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 Does it not? Well, I mean, you, you got a lot of your film people. Did, did it look? I mean, it looked sort of seventy-ish, but it was all color corrected as well. So it looked like maybe. I bet it's never looked that fucking good before, ever. Um, not even on on an HD TV or anything. Did you add pots in? I swear I don't. Pots. <laughs> you add pots in. <laughs> Grandma, shut up. <laughs> Did I add Era. pots in? No. <laughs> it's been pretty. It's Did a, he just do a Kennedy? <laughs> That's insulting. <laughs> insulting. <laughs> Jeez. If I did Bush or Dole, maybe. <laughs> this Q and A's going off the rails. Huh? <laughs> like a crazy. Well, What's ever gonna stay? Were they thrilled to like get to say like that mm -hmm. word and? Like talk about sex stuff. So one of the things that's kind of funny about that is the um, they were different ages, and in the script they were supposed to all be sort of like you know you start out with the scene where they're you know ten, which is one kind of like exp early experience of sexuality, and then twelve, which is kind of a different thing, and so they're supposed to grow. But we were just lucky to get kids that would like that had parents that would say that at all. <laughs> that we kind of just like took what we could get. So you see in the poster, like, there are different heights. Because <laughs> one kid's, like, 11, one kid's, like, 7. And the kid that was 7, which is, the, you know, a really cute kid that was, like, uh, why does yours have more hair? Like, he has the first line of the film. He was young. Like, he was so young that he, he had no clue what he was he saying. Has no he has no idea what he was saying. And, and, the, and the mom was just, she was just relieved that he didn't know what it was. <laughs> but I'm, I'd be fascinated to, like, to meet, that, meet up with that kid, like, 10 years from now and be like, yeah. What do you think now? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was fine. They were we 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 um we talked about all that like in email extensively with the parents and uh, the, as far as how much fun they had saying it, the one yeah the slightly older ones had a lot of fun. Like I remember we were shooting on the bus and where's Kyle? We were shooting on the bus and they were just like this is like this is anarchy. These these are not real grown ups. The one because the <laughs> their parents had to stay behind. They had to stay at the house with Nina. Because we didn't, we couldn't fit all those people on the, or we didn't want them all on the bus. <laughs> and they, 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 there was just this moment of realization where they're like, we really, we literally won't get in trouble for anything. Let's pee on the director. <laughs> that never happened. Yeah. Maybe I have an actual question. Okay. Uh, Keith. Things that you always yes, want Kyle. to know. Keith. Uh, a. Thanks for coming. Uh, finally. <laughs> um, and B. Please. That was like, can yeah. you elaborate on that? <laughs> <laughs> you heard it. I wasn't. Why was that? <laughs> Horny. When was that? Uh, B. Why was that? Real he was banging his girlfriend. That, that's about to lead to my next question. How <laughs> <laughs> was that work? Uh, has your girlfriend seen work this? Work on a Saturday. No. Do you have any plans for her to see this ever? Nope. <laughs> really? You just, she's never going to see it? No. If I want her to. Whoa! He said it, Liz, No, I, uh, it just... Are you ashamed of this film? No, I'm not ashamed, but the uh, it was a little embarrassing sometimes. Like I, that first scene where I'm just in my robe and I'm jerking off, 
I didn't know I was doing that that day. I, <laughs> at least I knew I was doing that, but I didn't think it, I didn't know it was framed quite well, like that with got... my uh, fur and everything. <laughs> I like that he didn't know that that was what was happening. <laughs> I thought I was going to be in front of the jerking computer, off. jerking off, as I do. <laughs> <laughs> not not spelled out on the futon. <laughs> um, what was it like? You, you've never. I mean, you've you've seen it maybe with me once for the commentary. I've and then that's it. No, this is probably like my fourth. Yeah. What was it like watching it with people? It was good. Like it was interesting to hear the reaction of everyone. Was it like, but when when you have your hands down your pants, <laughs> and like there's like all these redheads and shit. How does that make you feel? I. Uh, it was good that people laughed. It would have been awkward if it was just silence. <laughs> that's how I. A few people it. running out of the room. <laughs> a few, a few <laughs> like dry heaving in the back. Diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody else got. <laughs> oh, she. But Lauren has one. Um, I was wondering if it was difficult or awkward during casting or filming of the actors who masturbated on screen. So who besides Keith? Because he he's been. the only one I could focus on. Kurt. It's Kurt. Yeah. Oh, Kurt? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's Kurt. <laughs> yeah, it, I'll, I'll, anybody I asked to masturbate, I knew. Intimately. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, funny little thing. You tell, uh, tell them about the underpants. <laughs> oh, so I had it in my mind that for some reason Frank was going to actually try to get like a shot of my crotch. Because I'm going to put that in the movie. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't think you wanted that in the movie. I, I think I just wanted to laugh. Those male generals. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, uh, what happened? I like, I brought my own. I asked you, I was, I was like, you have boxers you can wear, right? No, and I pretended I only had briefs. And you were like, like no. That. I don't have anything of the kind. <laughs> I was like, do you wear any underwear at all? You're like, never. I, I don't. I don't use underwear. <laughs> I don't use them. Fuck you, Frankie. Fuck you, Frankie. I'll smack you on the face. I thought I was masturbating at the computer. Um, and so then, like halfway through, when when he actually has to put his hands on his pants, I, I'm looking over because I'm trying to actually make sure that there is no male genitalia in this movie. Because who needs to see that, that at that moment? I do. Especially Keats. And, um, exactly. It's disgusting. And I noticed that there's two layers of underpants. If you can see, I ended up giving him my boxers. That's what you're looking at. But he had boxers, and he was like, "I need a second pair," so that he could do that. He could do a multi-layer jack-off. Yeah. <laughs> one hand That's over really the weird. underwear, one hand <laughs> under the top layer. But why did you? It, surely you have another pair of underpants. You could. You didn't need mine. I was really worried about a testy slip. No. I, you. you the, what ended up happening is you actually offered it, and I decided to say, "Sure, extra layer of defense." <laughs> Did we answer your question? Thank you. Sure. Um, although there was other gross stuff in it too, right? I mean, yeah, anything that's like too that's that was too tough, like masturbation or or ass and toes. It's it's either people I've known for my whole life or my wife. The old creepy man. Do you want to explain him? Like for, for me, that's the most fascinating part of it because uh, <laughs> I remember um, actually learning about this whole scenario in real life. Yeah, there was this um. There's this, this this online person. He's dead now. <laughs> Is he really? The way we like that's him. really a good a, a good start to any story. He's, I know that. I don't know. He died. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, let yeah. me let me explain. Uh, this there's this internet personality. This guy named his uh, YouTube name was E Darum or Ed Darum, um, and he. He, he, he looked like he crawled out of a Crypt Keeper's ass or something. He, he, he just this crazy looking skeletal man. And, um, and his, he had posted hundreds, thousands maybe of videos, one a day, for a long, long time. This guy lived by himself with his dogs. He had big, like, Tim Burton hair. And you could see his bone structure and, and, and nuts teeth and, um, and giant eyes. He just looked really interesting. And he just like he he lip syncs to Pretty Woman. That ended up being one of the most famous videos of it. So you might have seen that this old man just like mugging at the camera, going Pretty Woman. And uh, I just you know I thought there were he showed he had videos of like himself scrubbing himself in in the tub with his dogs and stuff. And it was just great. I just loved every second of it. And um, and I was trying to get people like you to watch it and laugh, but you weren't having it. And <laughs> and. Um, he ended up, yeah, one, one fateful day when I'm checking his, his YouTube channel, there, there's just this blue slate and white text coming up that's like, <laughs> E. Darum has gone to jail. <laughs> e. Darum is a registered sex offender. <laughs> e. Darum has broken his probation and is currently in, unavailable to make more videos. And I was like, what? And at first it was hilarious. It was like, oh my god, after all that time, that guy was a registered sex offender. And I started actually looking into it, 
And it was a crime he committed 30 years ago. It was like a couple of months of prison. I, n- I never really got found out what he did exactly, but it wasn't it wasn't the kind of sex offense that's like life or, or, or uh, anything too, too severe. And it was really strange that he ended up being a victim of his own popularity because all those all the YouTube videos he put up and all hits he was getting kind of outed him. And I guess part of his probation was he couldn't go on, he couldn't use a computer, he couldn't go on the internet. And so he went to jail and he died in jail. And I was just like, damn, that's, that's crazy. And then I started to kind of fashion that into a character um, that Keith had to deal with. It was fun. The guy was good. It was really good. One day of shooting. Well, one day with you, and then he did one day where we just did like his home videos. Yeah. And I, I, I just told him I was, you know, I, I've, I've made a lot of fucked up movies, people, and um, over, you know, for better or worse, I've made a lot of them. I've had to ask a lot of people to do a lot of embarrassing things, and I just sometimes you hold back and you're too scared to ask them to do the thing that really needs to happen, so you, you think maybe you can cut it together later. And that was just one of those things where it was like. Don't just just embarrass the shit out of yourself if you could, please. Because <laughs> like, if you hold back at all, it's not going to be funny. And he he went for it. So I, I like I go back and watch those Ed Darren videos, and they just remind me of that. It seems like pretty much the same thing, except our guy didn't look nearly as crazy. <laughs> yeah. I have two questions. What are you eating out of that bowl? <laughs> <laughs> Tell that story. Is there a story? Yeah. Chocolate pudding. I don't know. I first saw. I don't. It was. I mean, we shot it almost two years ago now. So I'm starting to forget why I did, even did things. But for some reason, I felt like I needed to be doing something during the scene. And so I was like, maybe I, I'll, I'll be eating pudding. Maybe you know, and it'll make me feel a little bit fatter around this attractive guy. And so I asked Nina to make me pudding, and she comes back with this giant bowl. Uh, and I didn't even think twice about it because I was trying to direct people. I'm trying to get things happening before light goes down. And I just like ended up eating the whole thing across time. I, it was also nerve eating too because I'm shooting. And um, yeah, I, it, well, we shot. We ended up shooting the stuff in Maya's um, bedroom later, which is kind of an intimate scene where nobody can be farting. <laughs> is that a rule? It was a rule that day. No parts. <laughs> I had to lift it though. <laughs> it was. It was. Uh, yeah, I totally destroyed my stomach with that. But I. I don't know. For some people. For some reason, people really latch onto the pudding in the film, which I like. It's, it's mysterious pudding. Uh, <laughs> a second question, sir. A second question, not to be uh, sort of maybe it's my outlook, but like if you can sort of. Sorry, this is a negative question. Uh, I kind of expected this from you for some reason. <laughs> Me too. Uh, watching it now, I mean. Obviously, you're limited in scope and time. Is there anything that you couldn't quite get to work or something you'd want to add, or like if you had like I don't know, hundred million dollars or something? To this? A budget. <laughs> I mean, I'm a big believer that money wouldn't make this movie better. I th- I I think that we got. I mean, the the main the the main cast and even a lot of the sort of like the the primary secondaries, if you will. I think they're all pretty strong. I'm very happy with that. I think, you know, I mean, I, I think a little bit more shooting time to kind of, to, to, to get just a few more performance options and, uh, and maybe, I don't know, a little more time with some of the actors. Because one, like, um, for instance, the guy who plays Dan, we had, had him for two weekends. That's all, he, that's all he is in this movie, and he's in a lot of that movie. And, um, and the other, the one who plays his boyfriend, Matt, we had him for one weekend. We shot with him for two days. And, and we got a lot of stuff. And you know, he lived in New York and it was just sort of a, but I, in general, I mean, because of the, the um, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that the MFA thesis had to be done by this time, I, sh- I finished shooting, I was so worried that I wouldn't have a finished product by graduation that I shot really early. I shot my first summer of the program, it's a three year program. And so I had a first cut in like September of my second year. And so I had a year to do whatever I needed in post, and, and that's when we went back and, and kind of re, redid a few scenes. We actually did go back and reshoot a few scenes. But they involved people that, um, like myself and Nina, that, that we could get easily. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, there comes a point where you, I think you, find, you feel like, for better or worse, this is, this is as much emotional energy as I can put into this film, and I should just go make a new one. You know? but I'm pretty happy with where, where it's... It's a ni- very nice little time capsule of what, what I was going through when we were shooting that. But every time, I, you know, I, I, I've seen it a billion times, but every time you watch it, you're like, oh, that's weird. Why did we do that? That's what I sort of asked, because when yeah. you make a movie, you always know where all the, the tricks are. Yeah. And where you messed up. And yeah, I, like, um, <laughs> you start noticing just bizarre things that you've never noticed before with a crowd. Like, 
how many like jokes about like asshole friends who don't pick up phones is in that movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of those jokes. It's him. Uh, it's him. Um, I mean, today. What do you guys think? Any weak? What, what are any big weak points? In the movie? Yeah. I think there were originally when uh, you first showed it to me, and then you cut out a lot of stuff that kind of dragged a little bit. I mean, I, sometimes I think, it, I think it's cut well now, though. Sometimes you have like a, you, you put in a lot. You have a lot of different things that you kind of what he's saying. You, you write a lot. You have a lot of different scenes, and they all seem funny and they all seem rock to rock. But when you put it all together, it kind of changes the direction a little bit and makes the movie go on a little too long. It's unfortunate that you have to cut those scenes out because some of them are that I really liked. You, yeah. have, you have to check the uh, extra scenes on the Blu-ray or the DVD. Because the, see movie, those, but the movie truly is uh, this group of friends that we have, and this is how the dynamic works. And sometimes you have to be careful of, of not getting too inside. Of yeah. Joke yeah, that's too inside. Right. Of, but but being we find in, it hilarious. But, but being inside also grants it that emotional honesty that that I think sets it apart from other like ensemble films and, and and also I mean making the film was kind of a, a creative family effort too like I couldn't you know more resources would have been for me and more people I don't know and I I can't I can't make as emotionally honest a film with people that I don't know as well so resources I don't think would do it but but maybe just I don't know you want a second shot at every single scene of course but you can only choose a couple so I'm pretty damn happy with this movie hey you your choice between two questions First one, how deeply influenced have you been by Truffaut and the French New Wave, or? What? <laughs> I'm not like Keith feel that. the square root of 69? Ate something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, 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 yeah, you're obviously joking, but um, I, know, I was more influenced by these guys than by other films. So you Pretentious, B? though, that makes so sense. you choose B? I choose B, square root of 69. Sex. <laughs> Oral sex. <laughs> Who else? Anybody else? Dan, I believe you had your hand raised at one point, and you've lowered mention, it since then. I was going to mention that we did have the opportunity to go back and you know, either shoot an additional scene or reshoot another one. And it was in that, like, after you know, shooting the whole thing, mm -hmm. seeing it all like, pre-cut, it was just like, we were able to realize, okay, well, if here's what would make this a little bit better. So, like, for instance, we found the dynamic of Kyle shooting and the lighting, like, that, that added a lot to uh, specific scenes, like, mm -hmm. uh, in, like, in the kitchen while you're, um, what, what you're trying to get her, get yeah, that was one of the added scenes later. That's why I'm a little fatter in it. <laughs> <laughs> but we were, able, we were able to get through the scenes like the introduction much quicker. <clears throat> yeah, it was a two-camera shoot throughout. We had literally two DPs. No, we'll finish yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, throughout the whole thing, and then uh, for the reshoots, we were like, you know, I would the single camera stuff came out much better in general. We had a lot more control over. Let's do single cam for this this stuff that needs to be right. And so going, going into the next film, two things I won't do. Um, I, I, we're doing one camera, and I'm not going to be in it. <laughs> because even if, like, even if my performance is passable or whatever, or I'm happy with it, it's, it's really, especially if you're playing the sort of fictionalized version of yourself, it's impossible for people not to read into it as, like, he thinks this of himself, or he is trying to represent this version of himself. And some of it might be true, some of it might be false, but I just don't want to fucking deal with it. And you can make sure your gear length is... Uh, same through and who needs that? Because I want to get progressively longer <laughs> as a film that gets made. Yes. I really never had Aaron to ask this question, but Aaron, how much of this do you think is true emotionally, and how much would you... 73%. <laughs> and how much would you take credit for over Frankie? Um, for the dialogue, or the yeah, scenarios? Yeah, the bits of it, like the gags. Um, the funny. It's kind of interesting watching the film, especially the first time. It's because, weird. Yeah, it is weird. Uh, because a lot of it really is scenarios that have happened in the past. A lot of them are direct lines that we use all the time to goof on each other, and uh, how we joke on each other, our dynamic working with each other. But it's not like he read the script or even no, was really no, part no, of the production, yeah, so it's, it's really odd to like to watch it with him. Freaky picking up on nuances of uh, his friends' lives that that we just use constantly, and th those are our characters. <laughs> did you did you have a temporary breakup involving a cat? <laughs> all right, so here's the scenario, people. <laughs> <laughs> the year is 2007. <laughs> Michael Moss, that man right over there, and I, it's probably 11 o'clock p.m. We're in the bedroom, and I'm sick of this bullshit cat that's hanging around. <laughs> so I knock it off the bed, and by this time, I don't know Mike's fanatical about cats, okay? So I figured just knocking it around, smacking it up a little bit is fine. 
<laughs> for no reason? He has, yeah, for no reason. Uh, so he apparently has an issue with it, and we have a, like a real physical fight, and it kind of you know shows the difference between you know I'm sure when Frankie and Nina get in an argument about the stupid dogs, uh, punch right in the box. They don't like <laughs> physically fight each other uh, unless you know maybe they do, but it's just kind of a different way that you know two guys <laughs> in a relationship have work together. And when you, yeah, I, was, I, I sort of like interviewed you one day. I was like, so uh, what's it like to suck dick? Yeah, for the, well, for the most part, yeah, yeah. Our, our group is is very open. Uh, you can ask any question without anybody being offended. Um, but when you brought up the thing, of, you were like, um, well, we fight physically. I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure I've ever seen that in a movie before. I don't think I've ever seen a gay couple like get in sort of a petty fight, which turned physical yeah, and we're, wasn't we're abusive. Also not, we're also not the gay couple that's super flamboyant. And which I wanted to put in the movie as well. Power bottoms and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let them lie to you, folks. <laughs> like Keith here. Power bottom all the way. The, like the power couple. Top or bottom, that's a real question that we ask Keith all the time. All the time. really uncomfortable for a long time. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know if they're asking me at, the, at that time. I don't know what a bottom or a top was. Me getting, <laughs> the, the two, reference. me getting two spoons from a waitress and making him feel really uncomfortable at Ruby That used to happen a lot. Saying, oh, just get us two spoons. <laughs> that wasn't just once. That wasn't just at Ruby. But you weren't with anybody at the time, so you were like, I'm not no, okay. It's an inside joke for myself to laugh at. <laughs> yes. Those are the best jokes. Yeah, I love the ending. So Thank you. Talk about, was that always like the conception of the ending, or how did it Wait, what's that? The, the, the sort of like the um, closing well, montage? Well, or? Question to Nina and her freezing. Oh, um. <laughs> when she finds out that he's a sex offender? Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, what, um. No, I didn't have that. I didn't have the ending pictured at all when I, when I first started. I didn't have most of the movie figured out when I first started it. Like that, you know, like Keith masturbating, but, you know, sharing the spoon, dogs on the bed, throwing the cat off the bed. That's really kind of all I started with. I was like, this is obviously something to make a movie with. And then, um, and where it was going to end up, I don't know. And then somehow, you know, Ed Darum unlocked it for me. <laughs> like, oh, okay, we can do the sex offense thing. But, um, but as far as where it all kind of ends up, um, resolved, unresolved, doesn't really matter if it's resolved, um, it was something to figure out. And I got there, not in outline, but, but through dialogue. The dialogue informed a lot of that. And when, once we kind of got married, which was... Whether you remember it or not, your idea. You were like, at the end, they should all just get married at Town Hall and then get the beach stickers. Go on, I'll listen to it. <laughs> um, I, I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to get them together, and then I wanted to leave off with something that felt like the beginning of the film, some kind of really pointless sexual conversation. There was no real change from start to finish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and and so that and the two holes thing was was. I'm sorry to say a very literal conversation we had oh, that I wrote God. down. That this wrote guy down. is in college and he thinks that women have one hole to pee on. <laughs> I'm still pee out of and have a baby out of. Um, yeah, and like, as far as, it was just like, what's... <laughs> right. <laughs> when I finished that scene, I was like, is there anything left to say in this movie? I was like, oh, Jess doesn't know. Let her know, and then get out. And then let the audience wonder, like, what's, what's Neil's tragic fate? I kind of like the idea of Neil as a tragic fate. He's in limbo. Do you want to yeah. tell the story when Keith actually got arrested for it? So there was this one time. <laughs> it didn't I was really drunk. No, it didn't happen. Nothing like that happened. Unless it did. It did. Uh, speaking of the writing, uh, ensemble pieces obviously mm -hmm. have, like, a lot more moving parts and are you know, yeah. like, straightforward. And, uh, it was tough. Uh, you know, traditional narratives. Is there a specific other film that you sort of look for? I remember when we, like, when I first wanted to talk to you guys about it, <clears throat> we looked at, we were like, well, what, what, what are good ensemble films that we can look at? Because we were trying to l look at the model that already existed, and, and, and for some reason I kept going to 200 cigarettes. I was like, well, they, they're balancing, like, <clears throat> 18 plots during New Year's Eve, but there was something about... Oh, love action. Yeah, and we were like, we, we thought about that too, but again, it's like 18 plots, and, and none is necessarily the primary, except for maybe Hugh Grant. Um, and this was like, this was going to be kind of a, it was clear that these were the four main characters. They were all going to get equal weight and, and sharing that. I, I don't know. I, Star Wars? Uh, <laughs> you were the one that was like, you should end it like Empire. <laughs> I was like, what? They should all With be the in like, and Carbonite. Carbonite. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just in the medical bay? It's Frankie losing his hand. <laughs> so ultimately, no, I, I, I just kind of, um, I ended up just, just writing it in real time. Like, once I was, 
you know, okay, there's a Frank scene. I almost sort of did it, it just in, in cycles, like, oh, okay, well, last time the order was this, but then it, as, the, as the script went on, it started to feel right who the next character, you know, the next character plot that, that complemented the last. So, so yeah, kind of, we looked at it, we studied it, but ultimately it didn't really help me that much. Did any of the order change in editing? Yes. Yeah, not not as many times as you might think, but like definitely six or seven times. What are you shaking your fist at me for? <laughs> I fucked up the color correction. I fucked up the color correction. Well, no, when you change shots. Or lack thereof. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh <laughs> snap! <laughs> Ouch. Um, can you talk about the music a little bit? Like, was it all original and how did that? Yeah, it was all it was all original. Um, there was a I I <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. I needed a composer. John here normally does our other films, and we've done a musical, and we've done all this other crap. And um, <clears throat> so, John was kind of the obvious choice for music writing because I've always worked with him. And it, but he's like a he's a pianist, and he writes sort of more orchestral stuff. And this was, um, it wasn't going to be a scored film; it was going to be kind of a soundtracked film. And um, and I knew, so I kind of needed to lift from a library almost is what I started to feel like after a while. And I, I, I posted a few um, a few ads on New England Film, which is how we got a lot of the actors, like well, like Jackie, and like Meredith and <clears throat> and Maya. Actually, we found a lot of these guys through New England Film. And I started doing the same thing with the with music. And I got a lot of crap, and I and, and there was a lot of people who saw the cut of the movie and were like, I am not writing music for this film. Um, but eventually, we we stumbled upon this one guy, um, who I think he taught at Ohio State. And he is a weird fuck. But he had, somehow he had, he had a, a, a small library of other music from other artists, that probably from his school or whatever. And, um, and he started sending me just awful samples. Like, uh, and I, we got into it kind of deep. And I was like, crap, I, I think, I don't think I'm going to use this guy, but I feel kind of bad. But I, I, I'd like to slowly wane off of him. But then, I, then like, he, he sent that song, um, Everything's Going to Be All Right Someday. Which which fit really well with the reveal of Keith, um, and that wasn't his song. But it was just like, oh, this could work. <clears throat> and then he sent that behind the barn song, which was supposed to sort of symbolize the beginning of the film. And the first time I heard it, he sang it, and he he had this real gruff voice. And so he's like behind the barn of the thing, and I'm just like, what the fuck? I can't use this in my movie. <laughs> and then just as kind of like a like just I don't know, asking him to try something else while I go find the real song that was going to end up in the film. I asked him, I was like, can you try it with a female vocalist? And he came back with this other version that again, right off the bat, I'm like, oh, it's not right. And I listened to it and I was like, it's kind of right. And then I, I I asked him to totally drop the vocals altogether, and that's what we used in the opening, and it's and we used the vocals in the in the credits. But um, I like that song ultimately because, first of all, it has kind of a 90s thing going on. And I wanted the opening to feel a little bit like 90s sexuality because that's what I went through. And two, the opening three minutes of the movie is, is kids with sexual, under sexual situations. And that's scary. <laughs> that's, that's something to be handled. And we already did an okay job with the performances. We did an okay job with the edit and the content. And I, even though I've gotten some, some flack, I've gotten some criticisms for like, why did you use such a sitcom-y, like, like, you know, doo-wop song? I was like, because it's kind of, I kind of wanted to go corny with it. Like, if we use a little bit of kind of corny music, we can kind of, I don't know, I think we can sweeten it up a little bit with something that's otherwise, imagine playing it stark, you know? <laughs> this weird, creepy scene with these two kids. Um, so that's, you know, that, that, that was basically the, the process, but um, that guy is weird. I ended up, at, we, we, we documented the whole, you know, everything in the movie, and he was one of the things we didn't document, so I asked him to send me, I was like, maybe you could take yourself talking about the process a little bit, and he sent me this fucked up video, <laughs> where he's just like, I don't know, he, he goes on some weird tangent about like, I don't know, I think he's a little misogynistic, it's on YouTube, check it out, it's actually Frank Music, you might be able to find it there, anything else, oh, now that's on. Keith, what was, uh, what was Frankie like as a director? Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Well, first of all, not to color your answer. No, but please guide me <laughs> at this one. But you were not, you worked very hard with me on two movies before, yes, before this. Yes, that, that's true. We, we have had experience with Frankie in the past. We, we were writers together for his previous mo uh, movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of just helped out with a lot of things in the movie before that. 
But You've been a constant throughout all these I have been a constant throughout a lot of these movies. The, the, what was helpful with this movie is going into it, well, one, I didn't really want to do it in the first place, just because I didn't see myself in as, as an actor. I thought it would be horrible. It seemed kind of embarrassing. And I'm a lot... I'm a lot more reserved than most of my friends, that's so that's why you see Neil is really uncomfortable, that's me. It's pulling teeth to get Keith to go <laughs> it's, anywhere. Yeah. His favorite place on earth is his futon, which was a quote we once and said. And Cumberland it's, Farms. But now he's got a girlfriend, and now he's like this cultured man that's like being around the world. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm going to go to New Zealand if I won the lottery. <laughs> so go but on. before all the scenes, uh, Frankie and I would hang out together mm -hmm. just a few days before. Nude. <laughs> we suck each other's dicks, and afterwards, we would just we would just practice the script. We just do the script reading over and over and over again until I was comfortable that I knew all my lines. So, going into each scene, uh, line-wise, I kind of knew what I was getting into, and then and then I'm. I'm a, I'm a futon, jerking off on everybody. But I can't remember. How did I treat you during that? Like, was was I just? Were we just normal? I don't. I, had to I guess, think, from Keith's perspective, he thought you were an a-hole, and he no, hated you. <laughs> it was actually a lot more pleasant than I thought it was going to be. I, there, was, there, was, there was like one scene that just like I was getting really annoyed, and I can't remember what day that. Was. Oh, I know what it was. Tuesday. It wasn't the car thing. Because I pissed everybody off. Everybody, I think, except for maybe Kyle, who okay. wasn't paying attention to me. That's why he wasn't mad. <laughs> it was when we were. It was the after uh, a fourteen-hour day. We were doing the tacos scene, yes. and there was some kind of logistics problem. Nina had to sit down, and John was like beached up underneath the <laughs> table with a mic, and, and 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 things were in the way of each other. And I got a little, I got a little mad. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you were, I think you all were like, oh. Well, I, th I think you were, you were getting mad at somebody, and I took offense to that. Like I was used to him. It's probably, saying it's probably John. I, I, I think it was. I wasn't gonna say. Anything. Probably flipped He's the table. And was like, his Record the audio more. <laughs> but I mean, didn't John just forget to turn on the audio a few times? Yes. <laughs> no audio. Perfect. It's a wrap. <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't like the first time I've ever been directed by Frankie and you, sir. I mean, we've gone through so many ups and downs that shouting at each other or being nice to each other doesn't really Stop. affect anything. No. Do it right now if I have to. Yeah. Let's do it. How did you maintain a straight face through all your um, all your, um hugely hilarious scenes? Wait, you. Had I a, was you just probably a, terrified like a, for all the scenes. A skill that you learned of not being able oh, yeah, to laugh at stuff. Oh, there's that. This is an awesome direction of mine. <laughs> Often there's a camera in front of me. I want to. I want to laugh. I want to smile. So he told me that. I don't know why I said this. That I should just do like. Face exor exercises, just constantly do things like yawning, <laughs> like making faces. So I kept on doing that over and over again, and I felt like I was gonna laugh before the camera just turned on, and it kind of works. But everybody was, everybody thought it was hilarious. Watch the bloopers. Watch the bloopers. You'll probably see me. Because it kind of stretches out your face for a moment, so that whatever, whatever, like, like muscle memory. There, yeah, you just kind of reset it. And um, making it worse. But the other the problem was like it'd be like, okay, we're up for a take, and Keith start going. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> and now, the and, awesome performance. and now, real actors around him, people who are studied, professionals, are scared for take their lives. Kids, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> look for the exits. <laughs> scared for their well, lives. The, the first day was, uh, I was with people who had already acted and things. I was the only novice. I thought that's right. You were like um, hanging out with like the actors' corner. The, of the, the, the talent, the beautiful people. <laughs> I felt, I felt uh, out of place. I was like, so theater. They were asking you, like, where you studied, and, like... Yeah, so where did you study, Keith? Uh, you messed up, You messed up with computer science degree. Computer science degree? Fuck you, I'll in the face. Anything else? Is that, did we, we probably already over, over spent our time. No, we're not. Okay. We still have Well, maybe, well, we can hang out for a bit after this, but I think we should wrap up. Okay? Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Oh, again, that day, everybody. Yeah. There it is. Well, I did. Before in my life, but there's all you can eat in your food place. Is it like, kind of like Portuguese food? That's weird. It's weird. Similar, actually, yeah. But you know, everything in there has no tags or signs or names on it, so everything's ambiguous to what you're grabbing, and it's like a flat rate of 750 a pound, and I didn't really know that. So instead of getting a ton of meat, I loaded up on like broccoli and carrots, and could charge 15 bucks, bull crap, and then I got shits from it. 
doesn't matter how many times I see it. I just want to keep saying it. Oh, anyway. oh my god, and Exit is so This movie was amazing. You should totally go see oh, it. Camera hog. A quote from Bring back over here. I, <laughs> no, I put Pigment yeah. on my She's face today, actually, one, right? so you could see me. If I, if I walked <laughs> against a white wall, you could say I have mascara. <laughs> oh, wonderful. All right, all right. Frankie, didn't you hear us? I really did. Don't film me. I did. Oh, you done with your dog? You don't need to. Oh, you came. Holy shit. How you doing? Was it okay? Was it okay? Yeah. So you've seen, you've gone oh, to all my way. Really we had a light turn well, out, so I'm really glad we came. Yeah. Last night. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I did last night. Oh, yeah. Hey, Keith. <laughs> Keith, <laughs> can I put you in charge of this? I didn't mean for this to happen. <laughs> no, this is awkward. Keep filming. <laughs> Do you guys have Blu-rays that you want to return to Frankie right now? I have and I would like to return I'd like to for sell cash. it for money. I didn't realize that <laughs> there was such a Walmart high return to be had. I'm going to bring it to Walmart and be like, I, don't, I didn't like this. Oh, I forgot the receipt. Uh, I get store credit. Just start putting it on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I, was thinking about, I was thinking about leaving it in the library. Last call for the purchase of DVDs at the front of the room. Oh, you're going to be there tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. I really want it. I lived at. I, 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 no, the orbs are off the table. <laughs> 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 we should take a picture before you leave. Actually, yeah, I want to take a picture. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I don't want to see Paul leaving. I didn't know the car. What? What? I'm not taking no pictures. Pitches. 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 That looked a lot better than New York. It was yellow. Yeah, in New York, I was like, my teeth look so yellow. Oh my god, the hideous monster. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> Is it the second time? Yeah. I've seen versions of it more than that. You've seen like scenes outside yeah. of the context of the whole film, but played a little better, maybe? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. It's getting weird for me to watch it at this point. I don't really feel like it anymore. Is that really loud? Oh, I'm waiting for the movie now. <laughs> time to make a new one. Thank you. Can I get a, can I get a picture of you guys? Is that okay? And Mike, too. Mike, too. Yeah, Mike. That's all. That's all. The inspiration. <laughs>